Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Final Fantasy Randomizer presents the Rando Marathon. This is our first time ever doing this marathon. I am your host, Dark Moon EX, and let's go over just very briefly. Well, I guess restreamer and talker and whatever else you want to say I'm doing. Uh, let's go over very briefly what we're going to be doing for the next three days. The Rando Marathon is three days of fantastic games. You can see a short list of them already up on screen. We're going to be starting with some Super Mario RPG, Castlevania, Aria of Sorrow, Hollow Knight, on and on through Metroid Prime and Metroid Fusion, Faxanadu, others. It is going to be three days of all of these great games and more, and all of them with the twist that they are randomizers. That's the random part of the Rando Marathon. All of this is in support of the Liam Foundation, a community organization for LGBTQIA outreach. And for the Liam Foundation, we have Kristen Revell here with us. Kristen, would you like to t discuss the, the foundation with us? Uh, sure. So um, I can just say our mission generally. Um, well, first off, let me say a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm just rushing, rushing off this morning. Um, my name is Kristen Ravel. I am the vice president of the Liam Foundation, which is an LGBTQIA plus community resource in Rockford, Illinois. Um, we were founded in 2019. We are the only LGBTQIA resource in that area. Uh, so I, before that, people would have to drive usually like an hour and a half, hour 45 minutes to Chicago in similar resources and information uh, for the entire northern Illinois area, it seems like, at least right now, um, in terms of providing information um, about LGBTQ uh, health care, uh, directing clients to uh, L queer affirming doctors and therapists, um, a lot of times we, we work a lot with the homeless population because there is a really large uh, population of LGBTQ youth who have been um, kind of kicked out of their homes or if they're not, you know, fully kicked out of their homes, their parents often might ignore them or not, or, or not continue care for them after they come out. So um, we do a lot of trying to find um, housing for folks who are out in the streets. Um, finding resources like clothing, uh, gender-affirming makeup and wigs, um, hormone therapy, and finding doctors who are supportive of it. Uh, oh, and we go out and do trainings too. So um, if there's a business or organization in the area, we'll go in and we'll help them become, um, generate some ideas to help their business or organization become more LGBTQ friendly and affirming. Uh, we also help schools start uh, GSA groups. Uh, we actually have an elementary school we're actually working with right now, and they're so cute. They all came to the Little Pride event that had city, and there's there's just not a lot of resources out there for things like this. So, um. Any kind of small amount, any kind of small donation started in 2019. Uh, and so huge difference. Um, we're kind of like in need of expansion. And we're just getting started off too as a nonprofit. Like I said, we send our dream goal down the line is to have an house, a house uh, with housing that could be provided for um, the this youth who are kicked out and have nowhere else to go. Uh, currently, we, we usually try to find them temporary housing and hotel. Mm. Can you hear? Yeah, I'm just you know, yeah, you're getting a okay. little robotic there okay. right near the end, well, anyway, kind of cutting yeah, it out. The, it's a really important resource. I think I covered yeah. the general basics, and if my internet's going out, I don't want. Um, I'm sorry. Did I was just going to go? Say, um, it, were there anything um, much longer? But um, yeah, the folks here are making a really big me for me. <laughs> 
All right. Well, uh, we I, you kind of cut around there at the end. I think your internet kind of got a little screwy right there. Um, did get some good stuff. I wanna. Can you... I I we. I think you're probably like hearing us like behind. Honestly, at this point, um, I I'm gonna get some questions written up for you, and we'll try and get some extra information from you, uh, that we can say later on during the marathon. Um, so I think that's probably for the best. Just because your voice is cutting in and out at this point. I'm sorry. Oh, no, it's no, uh, no problem. I'm sorry my internet's so shaky. <laughs> my sister told me it was going to work, but it didn't. <laughs> well, that happens sometimes. It is it is no big deal whatsoever. Um, I'm going to make sure, and I'm going to make sure that we get uh, any info we can from you um, in text form, just so that we have up to date stuff about your, your group and things that you guys do do out there so with that we are going to take just a well we are 25 minutes ahead of schedule right now we're going to take a brief moment to get things set up for the first run uh see if the runners want to go just a little early and then we will officially kick off this randomizer marathon from there stay tuned guys there's way more coming up One standing.
Yeah, I can chat for a little bit. All right. Well, good morning, everybody. It is a fabulous start to our FFR Rando Marathon 2022, benefiting the Liam Foundation. And I am looking forward to this fantastic Super Mario RPG run that we have coming up. But I did want to touch on a couple of donations that we have received already. We had a couple early donations before the marathon started. $20 from Anonymous saying, let's kick things off, put it toward boss randomization for Chrono Trigger Jets of Time co-op race. $50 from Phoenix. Will needs to name his thief T-O-S-U, or at least make several mentions while doing comms of how OSU is clearly far superior to UM in all aspects, not least of which is their football team. $20 from Chadberg, put this toward the Nightmare difficulty in the Time Spinner race number two. And big dono this morning from Guardian Marcus, $200, Ooh. saying marathon hype, so proud to be part of the FFR community. Thank you to everyone who volunteered to put this all together. $60 to Castlevania, Aria of Sorrow. $40 to name Ben Liam in Final Fantasy Mystic Quest. And $40 for Boss Rando in Chrono Trigger. Hey, Saracen, I think we lost the uh, $60 one. Do you want to say that one again? The $60 one. The, you said 60 for Aria of Sorrow or something? Yeah, so this is all part of Guardian Marcus's oh, breakdown. Oh, he's so putting we towards... Have... The... Okay, okay. Yeah, your yeah. audio cut out on my end for just a second there, so... Ah. Yeah, so I think that was my internet being flaky. <laughs> the internet, what are you going to do? <laughs> right. <laughs> so we, We've already seen the internet do internet things. Internet does internet things, that's what it does. Okay, so go on with what you're talking about. Uh... So just real quick breakdown again of that. So it was $60 towards Aria of Sorrow Double Chaos, 60 towards Final Fantasy V Hard Portal Boss, $40 to name Ben Liam in Final Fantasy Mystic Quest, and 40 for Boss Rando and Chrono Trigger. That was all from that $200 donation from Guardian nice. Marcus. So we are doing great mm -hmm. already as we're getting ready for our first run of the day. So, do you, uh, you you had some stuff you were going to mention about Liam Foundation, some notes or so forth? I you know, I do. Excellent. So, a couple of things that I noted cuz I I work in the nonprofit space sort of kind of kind of sort of. <laughs> um, so, Liam Foundation was founded uh not all that long ago, but the work really started back in 2015 uh, when founder Phyllis Galaseth's son, Liam, came out as transgender. Uh, that was the, the spark to bring a PFLAG chapter to Rockford. That's the Parents, Families, and Friends of Lesbians and Gays, uh, which is a national organization. It was the first, uh, first time bringing in any sort of LGBTQIA plus organization into the Rockford area. Uh, Liam was also the first transgender student to come out at Harlem High School in Rockford. Uh, Liam passed away in 2018, but uh, with that, you know, Phyllis continued to work in memory of and uh, through the work that had gone through with bringing PFLAG in, uh, the first Pride Month in Rockford was in 2019, and Phyllis began collecting small donation amounts to pay for transgender teens' name changes. Uh, the Liam Foundation was designated as a nonprofit in 2020, which is kind of the big milestone. That's that's when you are officially a nonprofit. And I mean, they have an office space, they have uh, monthly meetups for various groups, and they work on regional events. Um, one coming up tonight, and I think this sounds fantastic. You know, not my bag, but man, it's it's exciting. The steampunk fairy tale queer prom. That, that just sounds cool. That sounds <laughs> fabulous. Honestly, I would, I would, I, I am, I am straight. I would still go to that because that just sounds like a fun time. 
and you know they're they're partnered with a bunch of different organizations as well just you know this is just across the border in uh, Beloit Wisconsin so mm -hmm. <laughs> like kind of a it, it's one of those sister cities just over the border sort of thing but yeah. um right there but they also have coming up later this month a uh, a fundraiser from the Rockford Rage which is a roller derby team yeah. which Man, roller derby is awesome. Uh -huh. and, uh, it's fun. But yeah, also one thing that Kristen mentioned was, you know, providing resources for um, queer friendly businesses, doctors, etc. And that they call that the Rainbow Book. That's something that they have on their website. They're, they do Facebook live events. They really are a, a great nonprofit in terms of function, right? Like they, they get a lot done with a very small staff, very small budget and really trying to maximize what they do for the community. 